Hi, Kelly. We've gotten now two statements here from the White House. They released statements from Sean Spicer, who's actually on Air Force One right now, flying to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. But we just gave you those headlines that the New York Times and the Washington Post put out a few moments ago. And let me give you the statements that correspond with each of those stories. The New York Times story uh, had said that the New York Times has been read a description of the president's remarks to the Russian officials in his meeting at the Oval Office with them, in which he called allegedly FBI Director James Comey a nut job and said that he had relieved some of the pressure of the Russia investigation by firing Comey. Here's what the White House is saying about that story. They say the president has always emphasized the importance of making deals with Russia as it relates to Syria, Ukraine, defeating ISIS and other key issues for the benefit and safety of the American people. By grandstanding and politicizing the investigation into Russia's actions, James Comey created unnecessary pressure on our ability to engage and negotiate with Russia. The investigation would have always continued, and obviously the termination of Comey would not have ended it. Once again, the real story is that our national security has been undermined by the leaking of private and highly classified conversations. And now to the Washington Post story, which also posted uh, just within the past half hour or so, the Washington Post saying that the investigation into Russia has reached an unnamed uh, White House official. Uh, here's what the White House is saying about that. They say, as the president has stated before, a thorough investigation will confirm that there was no collusion between the campaign and any foreign entity. So the White House dealing here with a double-barreled news afternoon, uh, releasing statements now on both of those stories, which are going to get a lot of attention here in Washington, D.C. and around the country. Kelly, back over to you. And, Eamon, did these, these stories effectively came out at the same time, right? Is there anything to read into that? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, other than that the Washington Post and the, the New York Times are in a heated journalistic battle here, I'm not sure what else you can read into it. It's also uh, difficult for the White House, just the, the physical timing of it, in the sense that the senior staff is on Air Force One right now flying to Riyadh. Uh, they thought they'd have a few hours apiece to uh, sit back and watch some movies and eat some peanuts. Uh, that's not happening, obviously. The staff here, uh, it can be in contact with them whenever they need to be. And I can tell you there is a skeleton crew here at the White House that is responding to this right now. They, they were, uh, just gave us these statements moments ago. So uh, the logistics here are a little bit difficult, but manageable for this White House. Uh, Eamon, the, the statement that the White House gave in response to, I guess, the New York Times story seems to suggest a slightly different wrinkle on explaining why it was uh, sensible for the president to dismiss James Comey, right? He says, look, uh, we were going to have a harder time negotiating with Russia on other matters. Does that represent a little bit of a, of a fresh twist? Yeah, definitely. I'll go back and give you that, that part of the statement again. They say, by grandstanding and politicizing the investigation into Russia's actions, James Comey created unnecessary pressure on our ability to engage and negotiate with Russia. They, they seem to be, in that sentence, explaining why the president would have said he was under pressure uh, on, in terms of Russia, in terms of the investigation when he spoke to the Russians. Note here that nothing in this statement from the White House denies the New York Times account, denies the verbatim quotes of the president that are present uh, in that New York Times story. They're simply saying that, that uh, Comey's actions previously were untenable, and they're also saying that the real story here is that somebody has leaked this highly sensitive information. Those transcripts of conversations between a president and foreign leaders inside the Oval Office are among the most secret uh, documents that you can get uh, in terms of national security of the United States. The president needs to be able to negotiate freely with those uh, officials when they come to Washington. He needs to be able to talk about military, diplomatic issues of the highest sensitivity. Uh, those transcripts are, are formed so the White House can have a record of it. But uh, now somebody is putting them out to the New York Times. That has this White House concern. Oh, it's pretty shocking. I mean, I don't know what else you could do if you're the administration. He's mentioned his exasperation about the leaks. But I, I don't know. Do you take people person by per I, How do you figure out what happens so you can prevent? You know, these are supposed to be the people closest to him, right? Well, the conventional wisdom in Washington is that the you know the more you put pressure on the staff, the more you search for leakers, the more leakers you create because the more misery you create for your staff. So it can become a leak investigation yeah. can become a double reinforcing thing uh, for the leaking that you're trying to stop. So it's very very tricky. Uh, the question is, do they have any indication of who might have reviewed those transcripts? There would be a very small circle. The initial reporting uh, on this was that once the president had spoken to the Russians, they, they limited the transcript circulation to a narrower group than even usual. So the pool of people who would have been able to see this mm. and then call the New York Times and read it to them uh, would be much smaller than usual if that reporting, in fact, holds up. So uh, presumably they could go to each of those people and ask them, 
but presumably those people uh, might just deny it. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.